students, the official ceremony will begin with a formal procession. Our graduating students will enter first, followed by members of the Dayton College faculty. Pay attention to the academic regalia, the robes, caps, and ears. The colors of light the academic blitz, great across the shoulders, represent the academic fusion study and the academic institution where each professor's degree was received. Academic regalia often reflect unique institutional styles. Following faculty is the platform army, officials who will be seated on the stage. The leader of the platform army will enter, bearing the ceremony college mace. In medieval times, the mace was carried to protect the person of dignity. Once the platform army is seated on the stage, the ceremony will be called into session. Thank you for joining us today and enjoy the ceremony.
As department chair of the Physician Assistant Studies Program, I hereby declare this graduate commencement ceremony for the Physician Assistant Studies Department of Damon College in session. On behalf of the faculty, I would like to offer my congratulations to our graduates, their families, and friends. The faculty have truly enjoyed working with you during your time here at Damon and wish you much success in the future. This has been a challenging year for everyone, and with that, a lot of change. Our PA program was unable to properly acknowledge a huge change for us due to the pandemic. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Greg Schutz for his many years as program director and department chair. Greg has made the PA department the coveted program that it is today. We thank you for all of your leadership. I would also like to officially congratulate Joel Patterson, our new program director. We look forward to your leadership in the years ahead. I now ask everyone to stand for the Canadian and American National Anthems. The American National Anthem is being performed by Sarah Rodman, class of 2013. Please be seated. I would now like to introduce the class of 2021 student chosen speaker, Miranda Mankin.
that's loud. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Like Professor Kirk said, I'm Miranda Manquin, but most people just call me Mandy. So fun fact is I sat in the back of the classroom. So I was afforded the amazing opportunity of being able to see what everyone was really doing on their computers during class. <laughs> Which is why I think half of my class voted for me to give this speech in the first place. But whatever your reason why, I want to thank my fellow classmates for voting for me to give this speech on such an important day. Did you all know that there are 168 hours in a week? I didn't before I googled it. And the reason I bring up 168 is not because that's how many times Kelly Burkholder sneezed in a semester. <laughs> But that is pretty much the exact amount of time my classmates have spent staring at me, waiting for my computer to start before exams. <laughs> so no, everyone nervously staring at me is not a foreign feeling. And regardless of the reason why I was voted, I'm really just so grateful that after spending a year apart, we were able to come together and celebrate such a monumental moment. There's a saying that goes, it takes a village to raise a child. And I believe the same to be true for PA students. Mind you, I say this tongue in cheek, as the youngest member of my family and never actually having raised a child. I say it takes a village because without all of you here today, both in this auditorium and those watching at home, this moment would not have happened without all of you. So the first group of villagers to thank is all of those here to support the graduates today. Parents, grandparents, siblings, spouses, friends, and loved ones that fall in between any of those categories, your support did not go unnoticed all these years. You celebrated our highs with us from good grades, being our first patients to practice on, and to all the things we did on clinical rotations that made those not in the medical field gag just a little bit. You were also there with us to support our lows from failed exams, encouraging us to hang in there after long days, and telling us it was okay when we followed our preceptors into the bathroom by accident. <laughs> Your endless support through all the canceled plans, missed birthday parties, and weekends spent studying is something that we will never forget. So today, you all get to celebrate never having to hear those six dreadful words ever again. I can't, I have to study. The next group of people in this village to be acknowledged must be our professors. You guys were there for us when we were new to medicine, eager to learn, and well, a little dumb. You guys have fielded endless questions, responded to never ending emails, and stood patiently for long lines forming out the door after class ended. You all have gone above and beyond for us and your creative teaching styles that range from collapsing on the floor to start the first lecture of the year, offering incentives to meditate for mental wellness, forcing us to participate in class with names on popsicle sticks, or just having that sick sensibility to know which questions we did not know the answer to, and then calling on us anyway. If you guys go home at night and ask yourselves, do I really make a difference? My answer for you is that two of our students named their cat after Professor Tyka. So what do you think? And finally, the bulk of our village, my fellow classmates of the class of 2021, I think today is a bittersweet day for all of us as we celebrate both an end as well as a beginning. We have come so far from where we first began and have truly come together as a class. I believe the bond of our class is the sum of its parts rather than as a whole. It started as the common ground of anxiety felt during gross anatomy dissection presentations, spending way too much time picking out the color of our stethoscopes, and the sheer panic of not remembering if you downloaded the midterm off Exemplify when you were away from your laptop. We struggled with the same thought of how can there be this many antibiotics? And we are the only group of people that understands the sheer panic when you realize you forgot to say, I'm inspecting for general appearance after a practical. We supported each other when our classmates were dancing on top of the bar at Dell Denby's at 7 p.m., the same way we supported David Colden dancing around the room to Taylor Swift's Shake It Off, way too loudly and with way too much clapping. When we thought we had seen the PowerPoint presentation with the most words per slide, we were humbled by the next professor who would just make the font smaller to fit more words. We once thought the worst thing about PA school was a mandatory business casual dress code, but then coronavirus hit and we were forced to say goodbye to the classroom we spent 12 hours a day every day in. But this is when we became closer than ever before by sharing study guides, quizlets, and the faces we made in our exam ID photos. It just so happened that Dr. Schutz sent an email to the class commending us on how hard we must be working. At the exact same time, we had a thread on the Facebook page of which shows were the best to binge watch during quarantine. I am so fortunate and proud to have been able to experience PA school with all of you. We have made memories we will never forget and friendships that will last a lifetime. So to the PA class of 2021, we did it. I would not trade the last three years with all of you for anything, and I think we are all better people for having known each other. And while I'm not qualified to give much advice, the only piece I can know I can give is this. 
COVID has forced us to do so many aspects of our lives online, especially over Zoom. So please be sure to double, triple, and quadruple check your Zoom background photo <laughs> before any and all professional meetings. Thank you to everybody here and especially the class of 2021, congratulations. Now please enjoy a slideshow of some of our favorite memories. It is my pleasure to introduce Kevin Klosterman, Damon College Physician Assistant Class of 2001, as our keynote speaker. Kevin served 25 years in the United States Marine Corps and received numerous military awards. He has worked as a PA in pulmonary and sleep medicine, neurosurgery, emergency medicine, orthopedics, and primary care. We are honored to have him with us today. Kevin, thank you for your service to our country and our patients. First off, I would like to congrat congratulate you all on your accomplishments in completing a challenging program, earning the title of physician assistant. Today, I will focus my brief talk on the importance of developing, maintaining, and fostering essential relationships with your supervising physicians and the physician community. Number two, uh, the value of continually expanding your skill sets and how this versatility can benefit the PA profession. And number three, lastly, I will discuss with you the importance of obtaining, honing, realistic, hands-on training and speak to the value of starting your careers with a strong foundation in the basic skills. I have seen the benefit of developing long-lasting relationships with my supervising physicians and medical supporting staff throughout the various hospitals that I've worked with over the years. The PA physician relationship is an integral component of what makes us unique as mid-level providers and is an essential component to facilitating quality patient care. It is our responsibility to continue to forever enhance and build upon this relationship and to further expand our profession. I believe obtaining and maintaining new skill sets as a PA fosters a special trust with your supervising physician and peers that will develop a faith and confidence in you as a provider. The, the ability for you to continually maintain and develop these skill sets makes the PA role more versatile overall. 
I have found it essential to continue to develop skills that assist in free up positions for more emergent cases. By making an effort to learn more unique skills with your specialty, it builds and expands on the confidence level that your supervising physicians have in your ability to further broaden the role of PAs in today's constantly changing society and world. I truly believe that realistic, high quality, and effective training through the Damon College PA program, which allowed me to translate my, my knowledge into application in the clinical setting. This has given me a confidence that allowed me to be part of the solution to improve the standard and quality of care for my patients. The PA role is not only about being associates with our colleagues, but also about being leaders in our profession. Always remember to practice with motivation and pride as we are leading our patients to better health, whether directly or indirectly. Our role as leaders is also seen in the ability to help train new physicians in an academic setting and share our knowledge and experience with our colleagues that are unfamiliar with a new procedure. Our role continues to be one of listening to our patients and being able to be effective communicators. It is realistic training and preparation in life that prepares you for when something really does happen. Being a PA, you will encounter emergency or critical care situations that you will be expected to revert back to your initial basic training learned from PA school. These situations will challenge your character in bringing control to chaotic situations with your moral and physical courage. Remembering back to September 4, 2005, when I was the executive officer of Company I, 3rd Battalion, 25th Marines, in the city of Heat, Iraq, in Alhambra province, this was just four years after 9-11, and it was realistic, hands-on, standardized training and SOPs that I reverted back to when my command operations center was detonated by two vehicle-borne suicide bombers. Their vehicles were packed with explosives that drove into the entry control point of our building. This explosion, followed by RPG, mortar, and a small arms fire attack that ensued for over two hours. My company had conducted similar realistic training scenarios in 29 Palms, California during our prep training several months before my deployment and prior to this attack. As a result of this kind of realistic hands-on training, we knew how to respond effectively in the event that we had casualties and the basic idea of how to continue uh, to function effectively within our job responsibilities and take care of our wounded in an organized manner as a team. We all had a basic idea of what to do when something less, like this emergent happened. Of course, this isn't the exact same scenario, but obviously you tailor this to the situation you have at hand and try to always do the right thing for the right reason. Whether it is taking care of patients on the front line with COVID-19, working in an ER, performing surgeries in the OR, or handling patients from a natural disaster, catastrophe, domestic terrorism, or mass casualty incident, you always fall, fall back on your training, teamwork, communication skills, and hope that you prepared yourself effectively. Always avoid complacency. What you put in is what you get out. The premise is simple is that your broad, rigorous PA education that you received at Damon College has prepared you for entering today's PA workforce with giving you an opportunity to be brilliant in the basics and has given you a great foundation of skill sets to build off of. Your goal as a PA should always be to treat all your patients with dignity, mercy, compassion, with the highest standard of care, regardless of ethnicity, religious, cultural background, race, political, or gender affiliation. Remember that you ultimately fit into a larger team and it is essential that you are an active participant and contributor to this team. To all of you, good luck with your futures and again, congratulations on your accomplishments. I would now like to introduce our program director, Joel Patterson, who will address the graduates and give the white coat dedication. Good morning, everyone. Do something today that you'll be proud of tomorrow. I think that it's safe to say that the one thing that your parents have always wanted for you is that you find true happiness in your life. Genuine happiness will not be found in the car you drive, the size of your house, 
and certainly not by the number of likes you receive on social media. True happiness will come from the satisfaction and pride in knowing that you've made a difference in someone's life and the connections you make with people. There is no greater honor or privilege than to be trusted with the care and well-being of another. This thing of ours, this privilege to practice medicine is special. However, we are not special. We are not entitled and no one owes us anything. This past year, there were numerous references to healthcare workers as heroes. We are not heroes. We are people, people with fears and flaws like everyone else. And our patients are people. They are not a 60-year-old, 90% coronary stenosis, but rather a man that would like to walk his dog. They are not a 75-year-old degenerative hip, but rather a woman who would like to dance at her grandson's wedding. They are not a 17-year-old bipolar, but rather a young woman who would like to crawl out from underneath the covers and realize her full potential in life. Please take a moment and reflect on a person that means more to you than anything. Now, think for a moment how you would want someone to treat them if they were sick, in pain, scared, and confused. All good clinicians have a grasp of pathophysiology and pharmacology. However, what separates the exceptional from the good is a genuine compassion for others. A selfless drive to excel, not for the sake of monetary gain or personal recognition, but the sense of pride in making someone else's life a bit more comfortable. The great clinicians make personal sacrifices that go unrecognized. They have an unquenchable thirst for knowledge and quite simply are good people. Be a good person. Our actions don't need to be heroic. A smile, warm touch, kind, sincere words of encouragement are often more powerful than traditional treatments. One of the nicest letters I ever received came from the wife of a patient that I had known for years. The first time I met the woman was at her husband's bedside. The patient was with end-stage heart failure and a decision was made to end traditional care. We sat together at his bedside for about 20 minutes and shared very few words but held hands as he passed. For the longest time, I couldn't understand why she sent such a nice letter. But she was my patient that day. Today, you receive your white coat. Your white coat is a powerful symbol. It represents a social contract assuring your patients purity of intent and seriousness of purpose. At no time should your white coat be perceived by you as entitlement to unearned respect or license to act in a paternalistic manner. You've been granted a wonderful gift, and with this gift comes great responsibility. Always remember, your purpose in life is to discover your special gift. The meaning of life is to give it away. Embrace the gifts you have and the opportunities you are given to personally help or heal this world one person at a time. Strengthen your resolve to use well the time you are given to share your gifts with everyone. Good morning, everyone. I now have the honor of presenting the candidates hereafter to be named who, having completed the requirements, are eligible for master's degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Damon College and the regents of the state of New York, I welcome to the company of scholars the candidates hereafter to be named and confer upon them master's degrees.
In the interest of time, may I ask the audience to please hold their applause until all of the candidates have been presented. Nia Abraham. Sarah Adams. Megan Marie Ballou. Elizabeth Morgan Battaglia. Sierra Elizabeth Bessel. Sarah Nicole Brisiak. Kelly Burkholder. Paige A. Burrell. Morgan M. Cotter. Jacob William DeBell. Andrea Marie Donovan. Catherine Duman. Daniel James Ferrari. Julia Rose Flass. Nicole Suzanne Fleming. Shannon Elizabeth Freer. Jessica Marie Gallo. Erin May Gada. Sarah E. Graham. Amanda L. Gross. Rachel Head. Michaela Hayflick. Caitlin Marie Honer. Kelsey Elizabeth Irving. Lindsay Ann Knapp. David Ryan Colden. Alexandra Maria Kolosowski. Krista Ann Koyak. Kelsey Marie Kramer. Rachel Helene Krozik. Lauren Victoria Manchester. Cassandra C. Mengen. Miranda N. Manquin. Hannah Claire Miller.
Sharissa Beatrice Mary Morton. Emma Mazurka. Jenna Mullet. Taras Nazarevich. Karina Anna Marie Pringle. Courtney Alyssa Putnam. Sydney Marie Saccone. Danielle Renee Savejo. Megan M. Schneider. Samantha Smith. Zachary Smith. Lauren Kate Szymanski. Caitlin E. Simkowski. Shelmy M. Thatchett. Stephanie Mary Thomas. Natalie Ann Torres. Stephanie Tranquilli. Gulsha Turkaloo. Matthew R. Vandermeet. Jesslyn Lee Weber. Bridget R. Westerman. Vice President Brogan will now address our graduates. I now ask our new graduates to please rise. I would now like to ask everyone in the audience to congratulate our graduates for a job well done. Please take your seats. I would now like to introduce a short video that will serve as the official induction into the Damon Alumni Association. Congratulations. 
Communications Class of 2021. You did it. As your alumni director and fellow graduate, I'm proud of all you've been able to accomplish during your time at Damon College. Now that you are officially alumni of Damon, I am so proud to welcome you to the Alumni Association. Members of the National Alumni Board will tell you the amazing opportunities that await you now that you're Damon alumni. The tight-knit community of Damon College doesn't end with graduation. As we begin the next chapter of life, this is just the beginning. We are proud to have you join the over 18,000 graduates that make up our Damon alumni community. The Alumni Association can provide you with ways to stay connected, explore free resources, and continue lifelong learning. As a part of the Alumni Association, you have access to a number of benefits and services. This includes retaining your Damon.edu email address, with access to the full Google Suite. The ability to request a transcript at any time and audit courses to continue your academic exploration and self enrichment The Career Services team offers free and unlimited support for you. As you begin the next chapter of your journey, they can help up your professional game. With interview prep, tools for effective salary negotiation, and career mentorship. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We'll keep you connected with your classmates, help you promote your own content, offer small business spotlights for our alumni entrepreneurs, and connect you with the full network of the Damon alumni family around the globe. We want our Damon alumni communications to reach you. Don't forget to send us your updates about work and life. From landing a dream job to walking down the aisle, you always have a home here, forever Damon. Until we meet again, congratulations. 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 I would now like to introduce again Joel Patterson, who will address the graduates. To the friends and families of our graduates, thank you very much for the opportunity to share these wonderful people these past few years. To my colleagues, faculty, staff, there are no words of appreciation that can express for the dedication and hard work that each of you has put into these past three years to help these people reach their goals. Many hours before a typical working day, many hours late into the evening, and often on weekends. And now to the graduates. You've been challenged intellectually, emotionally, and even physically these last three years. And you didn't just survive, but you've thrived. You've got so many great opportunities waiting for you. This is a great day. You may be leaving Damon, but Damon's never going to leave you. You are our colleagues. And so like so many other colleagues have come back and taught and precepted students, you are all welcome to do the same. Congratulations, we're so happy for you. Be proud of yourselves. Go out and do something today. You'll be proud of tomorrow. Congratulations, guys. Thank you for helping celebrate our graduates. I will soon declare this ceremony officially concluded. Please remain in your seats until the platform party and the graduates have left the room. We will be making our way to the lobby of the RIC for a group picture, so please come. Diplomas for May graduates will be distributed in the registrar's office early July. Check the registrar's website and watch for diploma pickup emails for the exact date. Any diplomas not picked up by mid-July will be mailed to the graduates. As department chair, I hereby declare that this graduate commencement ceremony for the Department of Physician Assistant Studies of Damon College has concluded.